Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to actually show you guys uh, the adventures of our solo self-found explosive arrow character that we're kind of just having fun with messing around mainly for the purpose of just testing out solo self-found and explosive arrow. Um, so I want to go ahead and show you guys like some easy content just kind of how the character plays. I am level 73 so I've been playing for about a day and a half. Nothing too crazy. Um, and yeah, by the way, as a little spoiler for people who always ask to see me without like any like long hair, here you go. I'm role-playing as a scorpion today. Here's my stinger. So, chat, you guys better watch out. I'm coming for you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right on into a blood aqueduct. Now, the reason why I like showing characters in blood aqueduct is, for me, this is kind of like, this is kind of like um, the old uh, dried lake. I know a lot of people go to different places, but for me, this is basically my dried lake. Now, this character is solo self-found, SSF, by the way, so that means I have not traded anything, nor can I trade for any or anything. So everything has been acquired uh, by myself. And I will say that so far, I've kind of been like an explosive arrow. I won't lie, I tried leveling with it, um, starting from like level 30-something, and it was kind of an interesting experience. Um, definitely wouldn't recommend going blood magic with a six link at level like 35, because... Uh, well, it's not very good for your health. <laughs> it's very, very rippy. But after, I think after I got Slayer Ascendancy Leech, it became, it became much, much better. Uh, because now with Vulnerability and Blood Rage on, I can just shoot as fast as I can. And I do not even go down as long as I have the Overleech active. I will say that even though I have, like, I guess you could say more HP than most people would have at 73. I do feel extremely squishy on my character. Uh, the reason why I haven't shown you guys anything in maps at this level either is mainly because I'm not even resistance capped right now. Um, I think, yeah, 68, 50, 40 is not very good. We actually just killed Katava last night and I jumped right on into this character to make the video. Let's see, what do we get from this Arcanist box? Oh, hello. Reading is hard, boys. Oh. Yeah, they're kind of mad. So this brings up the next one, which is... Uh, my single target isn't very strong. It's okay. Uh, I haven't really thought of... Well, I haven't really gone out of my way too much to, like, fix the single target. What is this? Is this, like, a boss? I can't even, like, see it. What is that? Maiden of the Black Crest? I don't think I've ever seen that before. <laughs> Oh yeah, so like I was going to say, my single target isn't anything too good uh, or like too special. Our single target is pretty good if we can get a, something like pinned up against the wall. Because if we have uh, something pinned up against the wall, let's see if I can show you in like a better spot. I don't even know if this place... Oh, here we go. Here's a wall. So say I have like a rare right here. If I get him against the wall, anytime your arrows tap like the wall, they count as a one stack and will explode. Normally on a mob, you can get up to five stacks, so this way you get, like, overlapping explosions whenever you're hitting them, aka, you know, shotgunning and AoE overlapping. But it's a pretty nice playstyle. I would assume once you get, like, the gear and you're running maps, you can pretty much just two-tap everything. Uh, you know, of course, tanky rares, you'll you'll five-tap, etc. So, in terms of the character and pretty much how it's built, uh, here is my passive tree. I don't know if any of this is final. I'm not really sure. I didn't really look up EA guides or anything. Uh, specifically, but this is kind of where we are. I rushed blood magic ASAP so that I could start going explosive arrow And then after getting blood magic, I kind of wanted to get regen. So we've got warriors blood uh, life regeneration golems blood shaper uh, I did I was gonna go for combat stamina, but it's a bit out of the way uh, also quick recovery now with the new change to elemental damage elemental damage with attacks does work 
for Explosive Arrow's secondary explosion. Um, it did not previously when it was weapon elemental damage. Now, what that means as well is Lava Lash, since the text on Lava Lash was not changed, it actually does not penetrate their fire resistance. Now, I haven't tested this. This is just based off the wording. So if I am giving this information, I do apologize. It's just this is how it's been explained to me, and I'm pretty sure this is how it works. But these nodes here, oopsies, these nodes here will still give you damage because it's increased fire damage with attack skills, not weapon elemental damage. So that, that kind of um, opens up another opportunity for Explosive Air to get, like, Elemental damage on your gear, uh, which I don't have any of at all. So that was kind of cool to kind of figure out with the character. We also have Elemental Equilibrium, and my Kiri's Bite gives um, flat cold damage to attacks. So I'm pretty sure the way it works in this interaction... Oh, I don't even have a hideout. Here we go. Essentially, you'll shoot the target, and when you shoot the target, I'm going to remove, like, reduce duration here so that you can see. Where's duration? All right. If you shoot the target, it's going to have vulnerable to fire, if you see there. The reason why it's vulnerable to fire is the Heary's Bite gives us the cold damage, so that when we attack, we do apply that. Now, the explosions, I believe, count as Elemental Equilibrium as well, so I don't know if you get all five explosions before the EE applies or how that works exactly. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, so, chat, you guys can help me with that, you know, with that in the comments. I don't know if people run it, to be honest. Elemental Overload is active all the time. Uh... Each, each shot that you make rolls an individual chance to crit. Well, all five are normal, but I think the explosive arrows individually might roll different ones. I don't know on that either. But it's pretty cool. Like, I'm happy to not run, like, an overstorm setup uh, because I really, really dislike that. I like builds kind of like this that it's, it's kind of more, not automated, but you don't have to do, like, those odd quirky mechanics to get your character, you know, the maximum effectiveness. So in terms of links and stuff, what I'm currently using is less duration, elemental damage with attacks, explosive arrow, fire pen, elemental focus, and greater multiple projectiles. For a single target, if I can't get anything against the wall, I will swap out... Where is it? Uh, I don't have it. Oh, here it is. Conk effect with GMP, because that gives you such a huge single-shot explosive arrow. Of course, if you can get something against the wall, you can like throw down a decoy totem and just have it face against the wall and just shoot at it, that's probably the better method to do. In terms of uniques, because this guy is solo cell found, I want to kind of run you guys down with how I acquired my Quill Rain, Gold Rim. Hiri's Bite is actually a crafted recipe. You can go look this up. Anybody can make it. It's not a drop. Um, and then, of course, my Tabula Rasa, my Wanderlust, and my Karui Ward. So... What I did personally is, let's start with here, and I don't know if I can even show you this because if it's not going to spawn, then it's not going to work. But your goal is farming low-level unique monsters. I believe exiles have the better drop rate over invasion bosses, but invasion bosses do work, but I, I would recommend exiles. So the first place we're going to check is Tidal Island. Now the reason why you want to go to a low-level uh, area is the lower level a monster, the less drops it has so essentially if you fight a level 5 exile he can only drop uniques of level 5 and below he can't go higher now do remember that exiles because their unique name mobs are plus 2 on the zone level so this is 20 rogue exiles so they're actually level 5 also what i did is i have an eye of cheyula but you can also just use a gold amulet and two gold rings and you'll have a bunch of magic find to pretty much get started And then you basically just kill them, and you don't stop. You you murder all of them. <laughs> you just keep going until your loot filter tags uh, something that you want. Like, you know, if you hear a unique, you can turn around and go get it. Tidal Island is a great place because it's a circle, so you just pretty much do the circle rotation. And you can do this, you can start doing this at like level 20. All you need to do is just move fast, and you'll get it. You'll get your quicksilvers by doing this anyway. You just need to move quickly and kill the targets and have a bit of magic find. The other places you can do it, and again, you, you feel free to do this with whatever zones you want. I didn't go higher than ledge. I don't know that. Obviously, the the most optimal thing would be the lower level that you can find, uh, and then of course the higher. You don't want to go much higher than the item you're looking for. So if Quill Rain drops at level 5, you don't want to fight level 50 exiles. You want to fight around that range. But the highest I went was Ledge. 
but from these areas, ledge works out really well. Flooded depths on, on the way to Dweller is not bad, but you need to have like Flame Dash, Leap Slam, or um, a Blink Arrow because there's a lot of just like dead ends or areas you could just like kind of jump over. Um, Submerged Passage, I didn't end up doing. Mud Flats is not bad because it's like a circle. Fetid Pool is really nice too. Fetid Pool is kind of a similar layout to Tidal Island. It just has more kind of like nooks and crannies. I'm sure you guys all know this one. Let me go here. Actually, look, we got invasion bosses here, so this is also not bad. Oh, it's over there. Here it is. So, Fetid Pool, you pretty much just do the exact same thing. Uh, there's, like, this big little river thing in the middle. Wow, there's rogue exiles here, too? Like, what? That's amazing. Look at that. There's one. That's, um... What is that, ship breath? Yeah. I feel when you don't even know the name, you just know it's bad. Alright, so that's that's pretty much all I really wanted to show you guys. Uh, I'll probably be playing this character for like one or two more days. And then I think the remainder of the days until the expansion, we'll kind of just dink around with, um, I don't know, maybe theory crafting, future builds, waiting for the patch notes. Um, and, and yeah, we'll pretty much see what happens. But anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Uh, in terms of bandits as well, this is kill all. You could help create and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, remember, if you do want to see my builds, you can always just type exclamation mark profile on my stream. Uh, that will give you access to my entire profile, which has all the characters. And just really quickly to go over the Pantheon. All I'm really using is Soul of Yagul because of reduced reflect damage. I haven't really decided what I'm using here necessarily. Um, I don't think I'll use Brine King because with Slayer Leech, you do get you do get the immunity. Um, oh, and I guess the reason why I chose Slayer, that's my bad. Slayer is really cool because you get the the cull, so you effectively can kill higher tier monsters. Like, Explosive Arrow's biggest issue, I would probably say, is single target, and because of that, this 20% cull is very, very strong. It also gives you free Onslaught, which is cool because that removes the Onslaught Flask need. Endless Hunger gives you overkill damage as leeched his life. This is really good, especially when leveling and just generally all throughout the game uh, because it gives you a source of leech you don't normally have. Uh, attack damage leech does not work for Explosive Arrow to my knowledge, so you do have to like use a life leech gem or just use Endless Hunger. Now, this doesn't really help you with single target, but as long as you do enough damage, Endless Hunger will be on for like, what, 20 plus seconds, 30 plus seconds, probably even more. And as long as you don't take a portal... You can just go through, kill your boss, and, you know, everything is no problem. And we're kind of in the speed meta anyway. Brutal Fervor just increases the leech rate. Uh, also makes it so you cannot be stunned, and you're immune to bleed while leeching. Uh, so that even though your life is over, well, is full, Endless Hunger keeps your leech persistent, which means that you still gain the benefits of Brutal Fervor. Now, being immune to uh, bleed also frees up a, sl a flask slot, and cannot be stunned while leeching. I don't think anybody is going to complain about that. And then I think the last one for Uber Lab would probably be Headsman, which is 20% more damage if you've killed recently and increased AoE of area skills if you've killed recently. I guess if you don't want to take Headsman, you could take Impact, but you would get less damage and more area essentially, or increased area. I'm pretty sure you would go Headsman. Now that's pretty much everything, so hope you guys enjoyed yourself, hope you guys had a wonderful time, remember if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care everybody.